Hey everyone, what do you do when you have a network outlet on the wall that's not labeled? Those of you who have been in the network business for a while know that this can be a real headache when that network location is plugged in at the other end. So right now I've got in front of me a toner and a tone probe. Again, if you've been in this business for a little bit, you know what this is. A toner, this little gray box, is something that makes a noise on an RF signal that you plug into the outlet, and then a tone probe is something you listen with it for. So as you get closer, it gets louder. As you get further away, it gets softer. So normally what you would do is you would just take this toner, which has a little RJ11 on the end of it, and you would plug it into the jack right here, like so. And then you would go back to the equipment room, and you would just take your tone probe, and you would start listening. But wait a minute. I can't hear anything. Why is that? Let's check my toner. Oh, I can't hear anything. The tone is gone. Why is the tone gone? The reason the tone is gone is because this network outlet also happens to be plugged into a switch on the other side. What that does is somehow the switch's center two pins are shorting out this, um, this toner so it's not making any tone. Okay, so I can't use my toner, so now what do I do? Well, this was kind of a headache for me. Now I know they do make devices for this. You can buy devices that... that um, have this function that's called a beacon where you, you plug the device in here and what it does is it turns on a network uh, link on and off in a rhythmic fashion. But those devices are pretty expensive. So what I did is I wrote a batch file and those of you who are not familiar with what a batch file is, um, it's, it's like a set of instructions for the command prompt on your Windows computer which does um, a series of commands and you can even make it do it in a loop and what I did is I set it up to turn the network adapter on and off. Or basically what I said is disable, then re-enable, disable, re-enable. So when I, with that running on my laptop, I take a cable from the laptop's network connector, plug that into the outlet. Now remember, I've got this batch file running over here, which is going in a loop over and over, turning the network adapter off, then turning it back on. Well, what does that do? Well, it creates kind of a link light beacon effect back here in the switch room. Now, for simplicity's sake, I'm going to go ahead and tell you right now, it's plugged in to this pink patch cord. So, in other words, that outlet that we was unidentified is port 2 on the patch panel, which is plugged into the uh, switch port number 1 on this Netgear. So, why is this significant? Well, remember, I said you can't use the toner. So, using the toner is a futile effort. So, these, the way you can do this is once you get this beacon thing going on, you know, this on off of the link light, is you can come back and you can look at the switches and you just, you know, it takes a few minutes, but you're just going to have to stare at them for a while and you'll begin to see that there's one link light that keeps coming on and off in a rhythmic fashion. Once you've figured out what that is, take the patch, you know, just follow the patch cord back to this, the patch panel location and then boom. That's your jack number. That's your outlet. So this works pretty well in small environments where you only have a few switches. When you have, say, six, seven, eight switches, this could take quite a while to do this. So this may not be the solution to your problem. Also, this is a dumb switch, this Netgear. So the on-off effect is pretty, pretty evident. On a Cisco, it's going to be a little more subtle. Or on maybe other kinds of smart switches like Juniper or Dell. Uh, is Because the, uh, the smart switches do kind of a negotiation process um, so you see there it just turned orange and so actually that kind of helps that it turns orange first because that helps you kind of pick it out of a crowd and then it goes back off normally with the Cisco what happens is when you plug in your network connector is it negotiates an orange and then when it you know goes to a hundred megabit connection it turns green it's not getting to that point so it never turns green so what you would do is you would just come back and you would stare at as many ports as you can at one time. For me, I usually try to like look at a, a block of about maybe 12, you know, and then if I don't see anything going on in that 12, then I'll just move down the switch to the next 12 and, and so on. You know, and like I said, if it's, a, if it's an installation with say three or four switches, this isn't too bad. But when you start getting into really big installations, this still may not be your answer. All right, so what I'll do is I'll take the batch file, um, information and I'll put it in the description and I'm not going to get into the whole process of writing the batch file for you or how to uh, you know how, how to edit it you can figure that out on your own you know how to use Google but basically the guy the idea I'm trying to convey here is that is that you can use your laptop 
as a device to create this beacon kind of effect with a batch file that helps you find your uh, your network connector in the switch room. All right, like I said, I'll put the I'll put the batch file information in the description on this uh, video, and you can uh, go and get that there, and then uh, build your own batch file. All right, hope that helps you out. Thanks for watching.